Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Savinder and welcome to DevOps Summit 2021. I'm very happy to see you here. And today I'll be talking about a very interesting topic. It's called how to start or scale up your DevOps career. Before I get started, here's a little bit of introduction about me, where I'm coming from. So I did my um, engineering in computer science in the class of 2000. Uh, in the last about 20 odd years, I've had the opportunity to work in large enterprises uh, like Siemens. I have worked for a couple of years in a couple of startups uh, and I've worked in the services industry as well. So I've kind of been around the block and I've started from a time where we used to build on four parallel blade servers and the build used to run for uh, over 48 hours. So I come from that era of data centers uh, and to today's modern age where we haven't set office, uh, foot in the office for the last about 18 months. So I've kind of been around for a while. Uh, outside of my work uh, where I'm a DevOps evangelist uh, with Zensar Technologies, I'm also an ambassador at uh, DevOps Institute and Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, I've also happened to write a book on the same topic that I'm talking about today. Um, and I dabble in macro photography. On a wet, rainy day, you can leave me on a patch four feet by four feet. I'm on a, ha I'm on a happy camper all day. I also dabble a little bit into spirituality to maintain equilibrium out here. And if I'd be very happy if you can check me out on Soul Hands on Facebook and LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I provide a couple of services on that as well. All right, so let's get started then. Let's talk a little bit about DevOps ecosystem. Now, I'm not going, going too deep about it, but just to give you a glimpse of what DevOps is. This is a famous periodic table by Zebia Labs, now part of digital.ai. And if you've not seen this, I would highly recommend search periodic table Zebia Labs and you will get this. It essentially gives you a bird's eye view of some section of tools there are out there in the DevOps world. So if something is large enough to, to encompass a periodic table, you can imagine how much fun it will be to master. Next, I wanted to leave you this with this which is a very, very uh, interesting slide. It's the DevSecOps reference architecture by Sonatype. Again, publicly available, uh, not to drill deep into it, but just to give you a complexity of the ecosystem out there. Now, what I really wanna talk about is, even though the landscape is pretty complex, still, this is one slide which I wanna draw your attention to. And it's uh, from how Netflix think of DevOps, it's not their most recent slide, but it still talks about the hundreds of microservices, the virtually uh, perpetual availability of Netflix all across the world in the hundreds of countries uh, that they support. The important point is tens of ops engineers and zero networks ops centers. That's what I get your highlight to. And there's a reason why I'm highlighting that because that means exactly that reaction which means that the skill of those tens of people is different from what we see outside in the world and i also want to get your attention to a 2020 uh, developer survey it says that sre or site reliability engineers and devops specialist remain the highest paid individuals you probably know all of this that's why you're in this conference today another data point from the DICE uh, tech salary survey. Now, the, what I want to get your attention to is the most satisfied part, which is the most satisfied developers, um, the more experienced developers are most satisfied with their jobs. And my take on why they say this is because DevOps gives you the opportunity to excel in the area that you are comfortable with that suits your personality. What I mean by that is, if you are an extrovert who likes customer interactions, who likes to talk to people, who likes to figure out world problems and solve them, DevOps has a place for you. If you're a core technologist who would want to sit in a corner and solve very, very complex problems, DevOps is a place for you. If you're somewhere in between, 
sometimes you like to talk to people but not too many devops has a place for you so that's what i wanted to leave you with this in this section <clears throat> i hope it makes sense now let's talk about the devops career path and i've taken a rather simplistic but a holistic view of that here's what i mean by that here's how typically a devops career path evolves you start with a devops engineer where your basic roles would be uh, you're maintaining a devops pipeline that's already been set up the tools are in place you're just running the builds if there is a build break you're fixing the build break which means you need to have a good understanding of the code the underlying infrastructure the way the code is getting built of the operating system and things like that and then there is continuous automation it could be on the environment side on the application side it could be on the infrastructure side depending on where you are placed that's typically where a devops engineer starts working and then you move on to probably a senior devops engineer where instead of maintaining a pipeline now you're creating a pipeline you've started onboarding projects into the devops pipeline and you're going on to more complex automations on the application environment or the infrastructure side and then you probably evolve into a devops architect where you is now talking about setting up a devops capability for an organization um, for an enterprise you're creating obviously multiple devops pipelines across technology stacks and you've started training other people uh, you giving talks on within your organization on devops and generally making people aware of what devops is this is one level of maturity in the devops career and that's where there is the proverbial fork on the road what i mean by that is after that you could take a couple of ways you could evolve into a principal architect what that does is what a principal architect does is basically it's a devops architect with a technology vision you push for enterprise for devops at the enterprise level now you're talking cutting across technology stacks all the way through the vertical slice of an enterprise uh, right from the adobe aems the front end of the world right down to the uh, <clears throat> uh the bottom stack which could be legacy applications which could be mainframes all of that you're talking about adopting bleeding edge technologies tools out there and you're talking about breaking the silos between the development team and the operations team creating cross functional teams and things like that so that's a principal architect role then there is a consulting role where principal architect is primarily at most times inward looking within an organization a consultant is more external looking more from a services or a consulting company where you engage across multiple enterprises and drive business value by doing some of the things that we just spoke about you might also be involved in setting up the devops capability at scale for an enterprise start with one group one team and then gradually scale up across the enterprise and you're also dabbling a little bit about organizational change management so you are an architect you are a core techie at heart but you have a business vision because you're helping uh, an organization achieve business value through devops and then another angle to that is an evangelist this is an <clears throat> devops architect who has helped multiple enterprises achieve their goals you probably are an expert in organizational change management and you know what new roles and responsibilities will be required to set up a devops function you also excel at creating enterprise structures for multi speed it because in any large enterprise you would have uh, parts of the uh, uh, enterprise operating at different speeds so how do you structure all that together how do you do release dependencies and stuff like that so that's probably the career graph of devops now let's come to how do i make a switch into devops right i'll keep pick up a couple of personas and i'll talk about how do you make that switch so if you're a fresher or between 3 to 5 years experience your enthusiasm and your ability to learn is your strength 
my recommendation do not target to start with a devops engineers profile the reason i say that be a good developer pick up any language pick up any technology but live the pain of sdlc because that will help you become a world class devops professional when you move into that area in the team that you're working in as a developer now developer i mean in the loose sense you could be in the testing area but still doing development so any sort of development related activity that's what i mean learn about code reviews static code analysis see if those are implemented in your pipeline if not encourage your team to do that if you're in the operations area your strength is you know what it takes to make production work and you also know what it takes to break production a couple of questions for you do you know at least one scripting language and have you had automated some stuff with it have you had any exposure to testing tools now it could be application testing it could be infrastructure testing it could be network testing anything have you liaised with the development team and debugged certain production issues have you basically had a look at the developer mindset and seen how it works in your operations role have you looked at monitoring tools and see how the feedback of monitoring can go back into the development cycle have you worked with the devops a team in your organization to create some solutions if not i would highly encourage you to look at some of these aspects now continuing with an operations expert uh i'll broadly divide it into the application side and the infrastructure side this is for the sake of explanation for the application side pick up a continuous learning tool could be the jenkins the azure devops of the world anything and try and automate your builds and your deployments on the infrastructure side uh, learn a config management tool the chef the puppets the ansible the terraforms of the world and learn about infrastructure provisioning if your organization is thinking about or already on the cloud learn the cloud equivalents of that learn about serverless pass container solutions learn about uh, the aws equivalent on infrastructure provisioning so that's some guidance for the operations folks if you're a qa specialist you must realize that the faster you go with devops the more important the role of a qa specialist becomes first word of advice if you're still doing manual testing today take a real real hard look and get out of it as soon as possible unless you are in a some special super niche area where manual testing is the way forward other than that in general get away from manual testing and move into automated testing now when i say that automation testing also is a very huge area so pick up a niche in that for example some thoughts learn about test case optimization you might have 500 test cases in your entire armory how do you select the 20 test cases which will give you the maximum coverage that's one area to look at second one pick up testing strategy for mobiles or for container ecosystem learn about them that gives you a niche in the qa area as well moving on if you are an infrastructure sme please remember infrastructure still runs everything even if it's serverless it's just that you don't manage the server but it's still running somewhere move out of the bygone eras of the vmwares of the world move into their newer forms venture into everything as a service learn about the cloud microservices serverless lambdas pick up that and always remember that cloud migration projects will continue to be million dollar businesses for at least the next couple of years so your job is very very relevant you just have to make the switch to the new world if you're a project or a program manager now i got, get asked this question very very often here's my take on this you have the experience the challenge is how do you mold that experience and repackage it for today's world couple of thoughts if you've engaged in vendor management if you've done um sla ola definitions that's one area to look at uh if you've done service management 
uh, in the IT services area, Verisam is another area to look at. Uh, that's uh, service management for the digital age. If you've done ITIL in your past life sometime back, with ITIL B4, it might be a good place, good time to revisit all of that, right? How about certifications? There are a various angles you could take to certification. It could be tool-based, platform, cloud role-based, learning platforms. You have a ton of certifications out there today. Here's my take on certifications. While certification can help you get an entry, especially with maybe lesser experience, the experience of actually doing stuff will help you avoid the exit. What I mean by that is, if you're pivoting your career, certification is really important. If you're changing into DevOps, certification is really important. But if you are in DevOps and if you want to scale up, actual experience and hands down dirty work is the only thing that will keep you alive. How to scale up your career? Conferences. Today, one good fallout of COVID, and I say this with a lot of uh, carefulness, is that perpetually all conferences have gone virtual, which gives you the ability to attend as many conferences as possible. Figure out your local conference with the world opening up now. Uh, figure out where the local conference is happening. If you are in Canada, <clears throat> Carbon Consulting does a lot of things. Uh, check them out. You can also check out DevOps Institute. Also check out where your local DevOps days is happening. So attend as many conferences as possible. Then follow a lot of influencers on Twitter and LinkedIn, not on Facebook and Instagram. That's good for entertainment. This is good for business. This is good for your career. And there's a lot of people starting from Jess Humble, Gene Kim, John Willis. We all know about them. Spend some time every day and see what they write because that can give you a lot of information. There are a ton of DevOps blogs out there. DevOps.com, DZone, IT Revolution. There are a lot of them. Flag them up read them every every day it's basically about forming a dedicated practice there's one part of reading it and there's another part of cataloging it so that you can retrieve that information when you need it you can start with a simple notepad uh, just uh, make notes copy the links you can get slightly more sophisticated with evernote you can go full blown with the notion system there are Tons of uh, YouTube tutorials out there on how to set these up. What I have done uh, for myself is I use uh, Evernote and I've brought down my social media time and I make sure that I spend at least half an hour every single day on Twitter, on LinkedIn and on browsing blogs. And then I put them all in Evernote and I spend five minutes putting the right tags there is immense value in spending those five minutes in tagging each article. I can't talk enough about it. Okay, hopefully this is making sense. Now the last part of it, five tips for cracking a DevOps interview. <coughs> Today, it's no more about creating a one pager, beautiful looking resume. That's not enough anymore. The resume has to be backed by a GitHub account, your Stack Overflow, a list of your talks, a list of your conferences, white papers, all of that. Create a rounded profile. And if you're just starting up in your career, don't worry about it. Start today. Open up a Stack Overflow account and instead of just consuming information, start contributing. It's a journey. You have to start someday. If you're more experienced, start writing white papers within your organization, start giving talks within your organization. And then over a period of time, you can go local and then bigger conferences. Revise your fundamental skill and very, very important, announce it at the start of the interview. Why I say that is because DevOps is a very, very large field. And it's important to tell the interviewer that, hey, from my understanding, you're looking at these five things 
out of these five, these three or these two are my core strengths. Very, very important. Research the interviewer and the company's profile. I interview a lot of people and I would have interviewed thousands. I would have taken thousands of interviews till day. You'll be surprised by how many people don't even spend 30 minutes to check the profile of the company that they're interviewing for. Very, very important. Also, if possible, know who's taking your interview and check out their LinkedIn profile, pick up their strength. And then when you're announcing your strength, match these. That way, the interviewer will ask you a question that you're comfortable with and you can score. Honesty is the best policy and it still works. Why I say that is if you don't know anything, it is okay to say, hey, you know what? I have not worked in this area, but given my experience, you give me a couple of weeks, I'll be up to speed. It is okay to say that. And last thing, there will be times when you will be caught um, in the interview where you won't have any idea on what to say. It will be a tough question. The way I've seen people handle it, they say, hey, you know what? I don't have a ready answer for that, but here is how I will approach this and then start thinking out loud. See, so understand the interviewer is not necessarily looking for the perfect answer. He or she is more interested in your logical approach to that answer. Speak that approach out. And when the interview sees that you're making an effort and you have a logical approach to arriving at an answer, 99% of the time, they will help you. They will give you a hint. You can pick it up from there and create the answer. Trust me, this is a beautiful technique and it works all the time. That gets me to the end of the presentation. I've hopefully made my time and I will be around to answer any questions. It was wonderful talking to you. Thank you.